According to the Oxford Dictionary, a museum is a building in which objects of historical, scientific, artistic or cultural interest are stored and exhibited. What an amazing space! How lovely. According to the Japanese architect of the V&A in Dundee, this museum is to be a living room for the city, where people can come and just hang out, absorbing it all by osmosis. Kengo Kuma wanted to make a clear connection between the city and the sea, floating the building out over the water and introducing sight lines to the discovery and glimpses of Dundee in all its guises. It's to be a living museum, embracing new design ideas from a city bursting with creativity. The city of the Bino and the Dandy has been reinvented as the home of computer games and its art and design college is one of the best in the world. Build and the people of Dundee will come, not just the middle class. All it needs a nickname now, the pokey hat maybe, or the spaceship. A museum is for everyone, but not everyone comes. In 2015, the Warwick Commission concluded that Britain's museums and cultural institutions are the preserve of the white middle class. Even free entry, it declared, failed to make Britain's flagship museums more inclusive. But. If you look at the experience of Hull as last year's City of Culture, it would suggest there's a huge appetite for culture. There were thousands of events over the year and three and a half million people visited the city during the 12 months. So is it about where museums are and how they sell themselves? When the Turner Contemporary opened in Margate, showcasing international artists such as Tracy Emin, who was raised there, and Yinka Shonabara, there were huge hopes it would lead to regeneration in the town. It has put over £68 million into the local economy since it opened, but according to a report published in the International Journal of Cultural Policy, the council has failed to support local artists, something which risks undermining the sustainability of an art scene. A museum on its own is not enough. In Glasgow, Kelvin Grove is the most popular free-to-enter visitor attraction in Scotland and the most visited museum in the UK outside London. So what's the alchemy of its success? Perhaps its ability to provide something for everyone, from an exhibition of Kylie Minogue's costumes to an important Charles Rennie Mackintosh retrospective. When Dundee's doors open on Saturday, can the V&A attract a crowd as diverse as its artistic offering? Well, we're joined from Dundee by Tristram Hunt, the director of the v &A, and here by Lee Tony from the group Working Class Artist, a group who wants to expand the appeal of arts to all sections of society. Good evening to you both. Um, first of all, Tristram Hunt, what will the v &A in Dundee do for a city where one in four children lives in poverty? Well, it's already made a uh, difference. It's put fire in the belly of the city, according to the leader of the council, John Alexander. We've seen a 10% rise in hotel occupancy, but what's really impressive is the work that's going on in schools and colleges to inspire the next generation of architects and designers and coders and artists to use the great resource of V&A Dundee to build their futures. So this is about regeneration, yes, on the dock side, yes, next to the Tay, but in the long term, the human capital of Dundee being supported by a museum and museums which were once repositories of great collections of the past are now also these real engines for innovation and change. But what, you know, there's this huge focus on Dundee now, this amazing building. Quite you know, right. Uh, you know, uh, but what happens when all the razzmatazz goes? How, you know, how is Dundee, how is the V&A in Dundee going to drive this through like you know, a stick of rock through all its programming, all its work. Every school child in Dundee is going to go to V&A Dundee. Every school child studying design and technology in Scotland, we want to make sure that they're going to Dundee even before we had a building or a collection. This museum was in fact doing more for education in the city than many other museums around the country. And what we think at the VNA is that we can learn so much at South Kensington from what Dundee has achieved. So this is a, a game changer. And we can be That's interesting. I want to put that to Lee. Interesting. I mean that, that sidebar that there's probably a 
greater variety of people will go to the V&A in Dundee than go to the V&A in South Kensington. If no, I didn't you, say that. I know, I know you didn't. I did, though. <laughs> but if you have... You, uh, you don't know that. <laughs> no, but if you have, Lee, um, a free museum, if you have an accessible museum, like the V&A is, you know, 20 seconds from the railway station, it's straight across uh, from the town. You know, people walk past it all the time. What is the invisible barrier, do you think, that you think exists about getting people from all areas of society in? Yeah, I think it's about not just putting a building in a community, but making the community the heart of the building. And that it's in some, in some buildings you walk in and there is that expectation that there's certain unwritten rules that if you weren't brought up always going to museums or theatres or galleries, that there is some uh, code of practice that you don't understand. And I think there's sometimes just that barrier of getting through the door before you even access art. But, but surely by working with school children immediately, thinking it's their place, and I mean, I suppose in the V&A and D, it's about the space, it's almost like the space itself is part of the experience. Yeah, I think education is a really vital part of that. But then, if you look, um, uh, Tristram, at what happened in Margate, for example, where you know there was this great big blast, and it has been very good for you know uh, the economy in one sense, but actually, it's not been good for the rest of the regeneration of Margate. I think. Well, first of all putting six to eight million pounds in, into Margate is a great achievement on the back of a gallery. But secondly, the point that these museums, these, this cultural infrastructure only works when you have a partnership between the mm. city council, the universities, education, the communities, the people have to own and love and admire the institution. They have to feel it's theirs. And what's so important about V&A Dundee is that this is not a branch office. This is not a franchise of the V&A. This is owned and operated and run by the people of Dundee. And I think Lee's ex ex exactly right that when they go through the doors, they have to feel a sense of ownership of this space and of the collections there and, and what it's seeking to do. Please. So we will work through partnership here, not through some kind of big-footed outpost. The, 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 Lee, you talk about the community being very much part of the, the, the uh, endeavour and putting uh, a, a museum, for example, in the community. Where there has been a problem, I think, as well, is that in an area where there's been regeneration, rents have gone up, rates have gone up, the price yeah. of property have gone up, and, then, and the gentrification then puts the very people that you're suggesting that should be in these museums it puts it beyond their reach yeah. physically. Yeah, and I think that's a wider problem because obviously there's a discussion about regeneration of areas, but then who does that area become for? So it is about if you're the example of Margate and it mm -hmm. puts that money into the economy, but who does that money go to? Is that supporting artists that are developing work there? Is that supporting uh, young people to come through yeah. and benefit from but, that experience? Uh, Tristan, the, the idea um, that you will have, you will bring uh, new jobs to the economy, but they, a lot of these will be service jobs. They won't necessarily be the high-skilled jobs, the curating jobs that you would actually like to see in Dundee. We have hired curators. We hope to hire more curators. These are high-value jobs, but also what you or have from to all think levels about. of society, Tristan, from all and all backgrounds and all qualifications. Well, that is the obligation on us, and you're, and you're right to challenge us. And right across the museum sector, we need to do much more in terms yeah. of the diversity of the workforce, in terms of ethnic diversity and social class. But the point with V&A Dundee is it's not just the institution. What we're hopefully going to see uh, are more young people thinking, do you know what, I'm going to study at the University of Dundee, I'm going to study at Abate, I'm going to study at Jordanston, I'm going to build a design career through the UNESCO City of Design, which is Dundee. So this is about, yes, the, the direct 250 jobs we hope to see yeah. being made through V&A Dundee, but then the wider ramifications through uh, the city. And that's why everyone's so excited here, Kirsty. You know, the, the buzz, the feel, the excitement. And we at the V&A feel privileged and honoured to be a part of this partnership. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.